A recursive common table expression is a common table expression that is able to call itself iteratively to produce a table that more easily generates subsets of data based on the previous iteration. The uses of this kind of structure are limited, but lend themselves to certain situations such as hierarchical data retrieval. You can think of a CTE like a subquery, but defining it before the actual query allows for more in-depth logic to be built in, then used multiple times as simply as using fields from a table. In a recursive CTE, you actually call the CTE from within itself, causing the server to redo its logic over more than one run. A vital point of the recursive CTE is that you build in an exit point into the code, so it does not run indefinitely. This can be in the form of a WHERE clause filter to exit when a value reaches a certain point, or by limiting to the number of rows within a table using a join. The basic CTE structure follows like this. First you define the name of the CTE. This can be anything providing it follows the naming rules of a normal table name. You can also define the names of the fields that the CTE generates. But this isn't mandatory, as a CTE without this definition will return the field names used in its underlying query. Next you define the query for this table expression. This can follow the format of any select query you would normally define, including joins, grouping and filters. Once defined, the CTE can be used as you would with a table, in a from clause or any subsequent table query, providing you use it in the very next expression. Note that it's possible to define multiple CTEs one after the other to use in the subsequent query. A recursive CTE follows the same structure with the addition of a union operator to combine the results of two queries. The second query is where you use the CTE name inside itself to cause it to iterate through the results based on the previous result. You also make sure that the recursion doesn't occur indefinitely by limiting the rows brought back based on a WHERE clause filter or a table join to limit the maximum number of rows. By default, a CTE will only let you iterate 100 times. If the number of iterations reaches 101, the server will return an error stating that it's gone past the maximum allowed iterations. You can change the maximum iterations by specifying the max recursion option in your subsequent query. The two sections are named as the anchor member and the recursive member, as shown here. Let's demonstrate the functionality by using a simple CTE. This CTE generates a table of numbers from 1 to 10 by iterating the value plus 1 operation. Here we've given the CTE a name of count up. This is the name we'll use in the subsequent query to reference the CTE. Our anchor member is set to the value of 1 and I've given it an alias of value. This is the first row that we brought back by the CTE as the result and sets up the first value to be used inside the subsequent iteration. Then we have the union all clause to combine the results of the anchor member with the recursive member statement. And here's where the magic happens. We increase the number in our value field by adding one to it. And we are getting the first value from our anchor member query by using the name of the CTE as the table for its from clause. Next, I'm limiting the results to where the value is less than 10. So as soon as the iteration reaches a row value of 10, the CTE will exit and return its combined results. Let's step through this to get a clear idea of how it's working. After the CTE, we add in our select clause to use the CTE name just as we would with a table. The CTE selects the value 1 and adds it as the first row in the table. Next, we go to the recursive member and select the value from our anchor member table and test to see if this is less than 10. This time it is, so we can generate a new row that is value plus 1 or the value 2. We then iterate back to the recursive member statement and ask if the value is less than 10 again. This time it's 2, so this is true. And we perform another iteration. And so we go down with each new row, checking to see if the new row's value is less than 10 and performing another iteration if it is. When we get to 10, the value is no longer less than 10 and the CTE unions all its rows together as the results of the table. Let's see a slightly more complex version of this principle using the FizzBuzz interview question. If you're unfamiliar, FizzBuzz is a game where people in a group take it in turns to count upwards from one. If the value they land on is divisible by three, they say the word fizz instead of the number. If it's divisible by five, they say buzz. 
and if it's divisible by 15, they say fizzbuzz. This problem is sometimes posed as an interview question to programmers to see if they can solve this using a computer program. We can solve this in SQL by using a recursive CTE. First, let's give our CTE a name of fizzbuzz. Next, we need to define our anchor member. With fizzbuzz, the first person must start by saying the number one as the first step. So we can translate this into our table by giving the first row a fizzbuzz label of one. Now we union the result with the values produced by our recursive member. In the recursive member, we need to check if the new number we are about to include is either divisible by three, divisible by five, or divisible by 15 to output the appropriate labels. And if not, simply output the value of the number. I've used case statements here to determine this. When the value of the previous row, plus one, is divisible by the relevant values, the case statement will output the appropriate text label. If not, it will just output the number. The percent symbol here is SQL's version of a modulo division operator. If a value divided by another value results in a remainder, that is, if it isn't exactly divisible, the modulo division operator will return a number representing the value remaining after an exact division. We can use this to check for an exact division. If the number we're counting is exactly divisible, then there will be no remainder, thus it will return the value of zero. Also notice I've put the divide by 15 value as the first test. This is because 15 is also divisible by three and five. So we want to prioritize the divisible by 15 numbers to return the full fizz buzz label. Lastly, we've added the CTE name in our from clause, and I'm limiting the iterations to values up to 100. If we run this code, you can see that each value divisible by 3, 5, and 15 have their respective labels applied in the results. Finally, let's use a CTE with an existing table to bring back a hierarchy of results. In our simple example, we have a small organization chart for a company. Williams is the head of the company, Miller and Garcia report to Williams, and both Miller and Garcia have their own subordinate in the form of Smith for Miller and Jones for Garcia. In a database table, we might represent this hierarchy in a table like this. Each employee has an employee number, a name, and a manager ID that represents their manager's employee number. I'm calling the CTE managers and defining our anchor member as bringing back the row where the employee has no manager or the manager ID is null. In this case, this is Williams. Next, we need to iterate through the employee table to find each employee's manager. So add in the select clause to bring back each manager's subordinates by joining to the manager CTE table. Now we can select the fields we want from the CTE in the executing select clause. In this video, we saw how you can use a recursive CTE to solve problems involving hierarchies. As mentioned, the recursive CTE has limited use, but can improve the readability of certain queries. When deciding whether to use a recursive CTE or not, take into consideration that sometimes simplicity of code can be better than using a more efficient processing method. As for subsequent alterations of the code by different coders, it's important that the code is understandable. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you have any questions or suggestions on future videos. And like and subscribe for more content.